But the thread I think we have to address is that there, if you hear the word regionalization, you hear the word special districts, there has to be something from the state to empower local governments to actually no longer be under a unitary system. So for lack of a better word, and maybe I'll be shot later, some kind of home rule has to be established in order to, to allow some, some of these changes in, 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 any, in any way, shape, or form. So being from Chicago, I voted for home rule four times and put it in the basket, no I didn't. But I'm saying that that's just something you have to look at, how it can be done legislatively, not giving up the state's authority, but delegating it with some power, not full home rule, to local governments to go on and do this. That's just my opinion. Thank so you very much. So are you much. stating that, um, and again, kind of on top of the record, are you stating that we need more of like a functional home Yes, rule? functional. Or, yes. Okay, so, yes. so you're saying that we still need to revisit that. I'm and asking. You voted on the three, but you, you still want to put it with overall governance yeah, okay. because it will help the other groups. It's my opinion and I'm just throwing it out to the group. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else your thoughts? I think so. Okay, so what I'll it's ask time. is, um, and please be flexible with me, um, if the um, agents from business license. If you can just come and give us a quick little overview, quick little snippet to um, to talk about those those four areas that I talked about. Hey, good, man. Hey, good, man. Hey, good. So just, just hit it. Just get here. Oh, you want to sit down? That's fine. Let me know what you think. Um, Mike Cathcart, our business operations manager of the city of Henderson. Um, just jumping down to a, a couple of the things that um, streamlining the processes between the state and the locals and um, also looking at NRS to streamline processes. I know um, Karen and I both had meetings with the Secretary of State's office last week um, and I did bring up that issue with them to say we, if we could cooperate between the state agencies and the local agencies. Uh, moving towards the, the next legislative session and maybe do a, a, a an omnibus type of bill that would be a business friendly bill to kind of go through a lot of NRS and, and see what we can clean up. Um, you know, do things with the, the DMV as Karen gave that example of our last meeting that um, there may be some issues there that we can clean up. Um, and, and lots of things between the local governments as well, the counties and the cities and some of those examples that we as well, so that could be something that would be really interesting for us as a, a licensing function. Okay. For the record, Karen Doubleston, business licensing manager for the city of Las Vegas. I think in our last subcommittee, we identified 32 different types of business licenses where we balance our customers around. And what that means is you go to the state business portal and, and you get your business license. You might get an occupational license and you come to the local government to you get your doors open for your business and state law then precludes us from issuing your business license until you have been to X agency and you have another permit or a license for them. And then in a different situation, we have to issue the business license before you can go to agency Y. So we have different pathways on, and we have it on 32 different licenses, it's probably on more than that. So when we were talking about a predictable path, um, the, the issue was to try to agree on a system that is state, 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 then local, as much as we possibly can, so that any business going through the process pretty much knows, I have to get everything done at this level, and then I move on to the, ne to, to the next one. As local governments, we really help you open your doors. We're doing your fire inspections. We're doing safety things. We're making sure that all the boxes that were required to by law have been checked. If you're a laboratory, we have to make sure your wastewater, this wastewater system knows about you. So a lot of people think that that local business license is just a piece of paper, and, and truly it, it is very different from what the state portal does, which is register your business entity. Uh, but 
going through those licenses, especially where we bounce people back and forth, figuring out what the barrier is. In some places it's NRS. There's, there's different NRS paths. Um, and sometimes it's, it's a policy. We don't know who says why it has to be done. It just is. So we've got to figure out all those things, but that, that, that. that goes back to having one comprehensive look at this and maybe getting a couple pieces of legislation together that would clean up those processes, okay. those pathways. So Tyrell Thompson, for the record, so we, we are saying that even though we have three key areas that we're looking into, we may actually have more than three bills. Is that what I'm hearing? I think for the for the most part, when when we've seen those, it's it's it, it's been in one one bill. A lot of times they're in those sections. For example, the affidavits. There is in the um, section of the state law, the chapter that that determines what cities have to do, and the one that determines what counties have to do. It is in those chapters that we have to collect this affidavit and that affidavit before we can issue a business license. Those are also being collected at the state portal or could be collected at the state portal. They're being collected at state licensing agencies. You come to us and I have to get you to sign the same paper again, then I have to send it to a state agency. And what we're saying is collect it once at the beginning and don't make everybody fill it out repeatedly. But it's in just one section. Okay, so kind of Thompson for the record. So being that we have four dates and we're not, we're, we are committed to those four dates, but we can add more. Um, but would it be fair to say that maybe we can start with business licensing on the April 9th meeting? With that said, we should invite representatives from the state thread. Because all of our discussion so far has been centered around us locally in Southern Nevada. So is now the time I'm to, sure I mean, it's a major great Yes, I'm sorry? I'm going to write the dates up here. So Sure, sure. So is now the time to maybe even if we have a video conference, because you know, transportation and everything, to have our counterparts at the state that deal with the, the portal to really help us. Yes, uh, Mike Cathcart, City of Henderson. I think it is probably time, I and mean, we probably could invite someone from the Secretary of State's office as a first look. Um, we did have some conversations last week, like I said, that there are areas that they could help us clean up in state law. Um, it probably would be an appropriate time to bring them in and have the discussions. And I also met with them, for the record, Karen Delston, Business Licensing, City of Las Vegas. I also met with them this week and we had several handouts from the last meeting where we had a chart with all of those state agencies. We had the affidavits that we identified that you have to fill out repeatedly and then the local government collects them again. We send them back to the state. Um, we had outlined all of that where it was in the NRS, and we were able to share that with the Secretary of State's office, and they were very receptive to working with us. Um, so they actually have copies of those and said that they would be happy to look through those and consider joint sponsoring. So. Mike Cathcart, City of Henderson. We did some of those efforts last session, like we talked about in our last meeting with AB 139. It's just the Secretary of State's office themselves don't have the control over some of those other pieces of. Um, state law, so we probably will need to reach out to some other agencies, but uh, starting with the Secretary's office would probably be the, the best thing to do. Any questions? What, what's the minimum, what, what's the least, uh, Daniel Braisted, citizen, what's the least expensive license that someone can purchase? Let's say a teacher wants to give talks and doesn't want to sell any products or anything like that, what's the least expensive process for him or her to get a license? What, is, it, is it 20 bucks? Is it? Yeah, I Mike Cathcart, City of Henderson, I believe that would fall in one of our $25 every six month categories. The state, the state license is $200. If they're a professional, then there may be another license at another state agency. Um, local, um, uh, general sales or services, uh, those um, go by, depend on how much that business makes, but the minimum, we have about um, over 4,000 businesses that pay $25 every six months. Every six months? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, how can you get out of this $200 state fee? That's, that's a, can we yeah. propose something? Because that's the whole point, if you get a business license, all of a sudden you can shelter about 20% of your income 
and therefore you have the federal government subsidizing things in, in Nevada. I don't understand, you know, if there's no real legal, if you aren't selling guns and gunpowder and drugs and stuff like that, I don't understand why the state needs that much. Because if I get, if you get me started, ideally, I will build and I will hire and then I can pay the higher fees. Hi, Byron Brooks, small business owner. Uh, what I wanted to address was uh, something that uh, the, the gentleman just said. And, uh, as a small business owner, there are a lot of fees that I pay. And I can tell you that it's every six months we pay a fee to the city based on our gross. Um, the monies that we provide to the state typically are for our LLC, corporate filings, uh, things like that of that nature. Now, as a small business, if you were to be a sole proprietor, there may be some monies that you wouldn't have to pay directly up to the state. It depends on the structure of your business. So while there may be some small businesses that pay a small amount, $25, if there is that many in, in, in a category, most small businesses are going to pay much higher fees. And the, the, the great work that, that the panel was doing in terms of business licensing is to help small businesses who have professional licensees in the office uh, avoid paying additional funds to different jurisdictions so that uh, hopefully in time the agency would pay a, a fee to cover all jurisdictions but not each employee who holds a professional license under the agency would then also have to pay those those fees and jurisdictions so it's it would be a, a great savings for a small business person especially for somebody like me that would enable growth uh, I don't want to say to be expedient, but to be a lot easier, that's for sure, because you're not looking at uh, double, triple, quadruple fees every six months. All right, thanks for your time. And, and Tyrone Thompson, for the record, because we have about 15 minutes, so I want to wrap up business license, and then we'll go on to the other two. Um, any burning statements that people want to say? Okay. One thing that I would like to ask, because um, you know, again, we want to make this as inclusive of a process as possible. Are there? And, and you probably saw the list. You know, we had we had small business represented. We of course had our business license professionals. Um, we had um, different industries at the table. Is there anyone else that's that's missing? That you know, when we really start rolling up our sleeves and working on these bill drafts, that we need to invite to our meetings. So so the next meeting, like I said, where we're talking about business license will be on the 9th of April. Or if you want to do that behind the scenes too. Mm -hmm. Everybody's being quiet. Well, well we, we can do it that way too, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, uh, Byron Brooks again, you know, sir, what I wanted to say was, uh, not only am I a small business, you know, person vested in this, however, as a veteran advocate, there are certainly things that I would like to see that I would like to push for to help veterans who, while they're going through their business licensing, uh, if it's possible to fast track guys, then uh, heck, for me, that's a win. Um, and if, if there's, if the fees have to remain the same for a veteran who's just come home from combat duty and is trying to uh, roll the dice in entrepreneurship, well then that's just the fees in business. But maybe the processing of how quickly he can get that business up is fast tracked uh, uh, compared to the way it is now for, for, for most people who apply for licensing. Anybody else? Yes. Sorry, for the record, Karen Johnson, I have a, a question for everybody that's here since I would normally be sitting up there. Is, you know, one of, one of the things that we've talked about is this frustration of, of bouncing people back and forth and in, in, in going around in circles with folks and, and watching our customers get, get very frustrated, trying to figure that out. But one of the things we were talking about with the Secretary of State's office was actually trying to do a, a pathway for, for a business. Has anyone out there actually ever taken a business from beginning to your doors opening and figuring out yeah, for different same, same. types of businesses yeah. how many real steps there are? Because you have to go, I mean, the first step we send you to Secretary of State's office, we send you to the IRS to get your EIN number. We go through all of that in our office. We actually have computers so you can get to your federal stuff done, you can get your state stuff done. We offer you computers in our office to do that. But has anybody ever done a chart and actually tracked and, and said what fees they pay and everything is? So what's the bottom line? As a business licensing manager, I haven't been able to find that data. 
very, very CPA. Um, in the years that I tried doing that, I was with a large CPA firm when he's helping the business is set up. One of the challenges that's always been um, is we've had people pay us to do it is power of attorney. Some places, some agencies will allow power of attorney, somebody else go to the agency. I don't know whether that's changed or not, but that was always one of the challenges. It ended up being where I would really tell my people to go, my clients, to go directly themselves. Because you never know what was going to happen. And you have either assigned, because different agencies will accept power of attorney, others wouldn't. Uh, that was always one of the challenges. So then you have these people who are really trying to start new businesses, who are really good at what they may be doing, but doing the maze of government and everything like that. And I'm supposed to be an expert at that. I can answer it. Telling them to just stay down, expect to have lunch, you know, send them along the line, so spend the day, and uh, take their pre meds beforehand so they don't get frustrated with anybody. Because remember, the people are behind there trying to do their jobs too. But it is a challenge. And I've done it at that time probably about 52. It would be a really interesting study. I know yeah. from our perspective in the city, it's one of the things that we're really trying to get a view through. It's difficult to look at the top and look all the all the way down through all the different layers and everything. And if the chamber or anybody wanted to take that on to really try to understand and then figure out if we can take this and straighten it as much as we can, we would be happy to participate. I'm sorry, very hurts. A lot of times when people are starting businesses, they're starting in their, a lot of times in the barrier of CK, uh, when people are starting businesses, they're starting in their home. Uh, they may live in an incorporated Clark County, Henderson, or Las Vegas, or Las Vegas. And as soon as they rent an office, they decide to get everything else, and they've got different jurisdictions, they have to get licensing again. Uh, these are the challenges. A lot of times they could transfer, they change their business, if they're starting out as a sole proprietor into an LLC or something like that, they have to start this whole new world again. Even the IRS allows something, something allowed to do there that the federal, that the state and local says. So these are just challenges that I've, that I've encountered over the years. I just think there's a lot of things we don't even think of. We just don't even scratch the surface. And if we could all get the inside and the outside in, in a room together, we might be able to figure some of this out. Okay, let's move along to, um, and, and you all can stay there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're comfortable there anyway. Uh, Tyrone Thompson for the record. Uh, so let's move on to Southern Nevada Health District. And so the, the three areas that we talked about, um, review the appropriate function and composition of the board, separate regulatory responsibilities versus public health, and then evaluate and revisit funding and budget. Any initial thoughts? Has anyone? Sure. <laughs> Karen Donaldson, Business Licensing City of Las Vegas. Um, we're one of the agencies that has had some frustration in working with our customers and trying to get them timely response. We try to issue a business license in three to five days. For restaurants and those sorts of things, one of their biggest hang-ups is, is they can't get their other inspections. So we had actually come up with an idea at one time, and, and the answer back to us was that, that wouldn't be allowed. Is could an agency, or why couldn't there be some flexibility built in to where we, as a city, if that was a priority for us to get our restaurants and, and our folks up and going, why couldn't we pay for a inspector through the city of Las Vegas if that's what it took. If, if we were not going to fund this agency so that they could inspect in a short amount of time, why could an agency say, you know what, it's important enough to us and our businesses that we'll pay the cost of an inspector if they just do city inspections? But it was not in our purview to do that. It was just the health district that could do that. So I don't know if that's even a possible solution, but uh, it's difficult when it's not something that you can have any input over and try to get a response for your customers. Okay. Tyron Thompson for the record. Let's talk, go, yes. For the 
director, Greg Blackburn, City of North Las Vegas, Director of Community Development Compliance. I, I echo Karen's comment. I think we, we should identify scope of authority. Uh, the certifications that are mandated by state law, our inspectors have as well, too, and so do the City of Las Vegas. There are certain health issues that the health department looks at, uh, but through the construction process, they are a lot of times duplication of efforts. I think for uh, eliminating redundancy and adding efficiency for our people and the staff and our customers as well. So I think that's probably one area to identify scope of authority, uh, especially with construction related projects and then uh, changes of occupancy. I don't know for the, I don't know to for the record. Uh, let's talk about any thoughts about composition. And we have about six minutes. I was April. April, I'm Julissa. Um, in the meetings, we talked about the differences between the fact that there's so many, um, the members of the make up the commission, there's members of the health community which absolutely need, and then there are some electeds. Um, some of the conversations we had in some of our meetings were, do we need more electeds on there? Do we need a majority of electeds so that there is someone to hold accountable? Um, and then as far as that, that makeup, we also looked at the possibility of, do we need to separate um, the regulatory piece from the health piece? You know, do we need those two separate organizations? And if so, who would be in charge of those? Um, you know, the public health piece, uh, you know, for, for people who may not be aware, things like immunizations, TB testing, you know, those things are very important. And then on the regulatory side, you have the inspections. Um, so those were some of the other things that, that we looked at in discussions with the committee. This is Brian McAnally for the record with the chamber. I, I appreciate uh, April Master Luca's comments. Uh, that's, those have been issues uh, that we've been looking at for quite a while from the chamber perspective. Sort of finding that, that function and mission, the two missions that we really have. Uh, Health district and figuring out if you build the composition or restructure uh, along the governance in, in lining with those, the public health functions versus the, the management, the inspections, and, and, and kind of uh, delivering the um, administrative functions of the, of the health district. So we'd be uh, very interested in having that conversation and figuring out the, the, the pieces related there. So thanks. I don't know, Thompson, any other comments? I know we're going quickly, but um, we're really going to roll up our sleeves on April then. Okay, we'll go to our last one, state boards and commissions. Can, can you hold it and talk about this? Karen Dunstan, for the record. Um, one of the uh, issues for us on the, the, the state boards, and we talked a little bit about the horizontal and expansion of this um, business portal is just to have a central repository of all of those professional licenses, endorsements, permits, all of those sorts of things. One of the things that holds us up at the local level is uh, the state law says I can't give you a license to do this until I have checked, for example, with the State Board of Agriculture. Well, their documents are kept on a PDF. So we're looking through a PDF, and then at the bottom it says, this may not be up to date, please call our office. So we're on the phone calling the office. So I can't approve that license until I can check with that board. If the Secretary of State's portal could, if it couldn't incorporate all of those applications and all of that function in that one central place, if there could just be a detailed tabs with check boxes, of what endorsements that Secretary of State's number is related to. So we're using one number through, we've already set it up at the local level, we're using the Secretary of State's number as, as your ID. Use that through all of the state boards, all of the state permitting processes, and attach it in that portal, just the result. Not that, We understand that trying to get every state agency into that portal is, ex is as expensive as it is for us to get everything into the portal. Just the results. We could save days on the whole government business licensing. Good. 
Okay, we'll ask you again. Oh, don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> so this issue is queen of boards. <laughs> this issue has come up in the legislature previously, and one of the recommendations that's been made and really didn't fly um, was that a lot of these boards are very small. So, for example, um, there is a, a board for uh, music therapy. It's it's a very small board. There's you know there are, are other smaller boards. Um, they're mostly self-funded, and the recommendation was, can we combine the admin side of some of these? So ones that would make sense, you know, certain uh, things that fall in line with one another, let's kind of group them together and say, okay, you will come together and you will hire one staff member that will be responsible for this information for the state, for the municipalities, for all of this information, instead of all of these different systems, because um, the settlement's right, it's crazy. I, I'm not surprised that there isn't somebody out there with microfiche. There is. Yeah. Yeah, there, there, there's card. There's card boxes. Yeah. Four by four. Four by six card systems. Oh. Thank you, uh, Maggie Carlton, Assembly District 14. Worked on the board issues since 1999. Uh, when I was in the Senate. One of the things that's been talked about over and over again, and you know, hopefully we've hit the tipping point, is establishing a state division of professional licensure. And just having all professional licensures through the admin side go through that department, have them partner with the state portal. We had discussed this before the portal actually started, and now that the portal is up and running, I think it would be an excellent opportunity. And then we would allow the boards to just do the uh, enforcement side to make sure that the professionals we have in the state are behaving appropriately and treating people correctly. There's no reason why the board should take valuable time and resources to check the boxes on an application. They can do all the background checks. They can do the fingerprinting. They can get everything else done, have it in one place, partner with each county to deal with all the business licensure. Uh, now that we have one tracking number, and hopefully, uh, we've been saying this for a very, very long time, hopefully, if the businesses in the state would like to do this, we might be able to push it forward next session if you would all be interested in doing that. Uh, Mike Cathcart, City of Henderson. One thing on the, the business registration, I, at this time I do not believe it is required. It's not in state law to require the, the common business registration. So some businesses still don't have that. For professional licenses? Um, for all licenses. When we're talking about a one number type of system so that you could track a, a business through the boards, through the local licensing, through your state licensing. Um, it's not a requirement to have the common business registration number at this time. It's state law that they have to get a state business license, but it's not a requirement that they have a number. We've just gone through and put them on attached. Them. We're at about 75% of our license businesses. What's, what's the number of all the Secretary of State's um, It's a, a CBR, Common Business Registration. I think the Secretary of State said they only had about 40,000 businesses that have actually, that are actually in that portal out of several hundred thousand. Okay. And just one last thing, if we'll not look for the record, um, and I don't, I just don't want us to forget it since I know we're running out of time. One of the other issues that came up in the committee over and over was um, the makeup of the state working commissions and are they equitable from the north and the south and you know are they are the right people on those boards because there are some boards that have had the same composition as far as what you know what industries or what representatives are on that board since the 70s and they haven't changed. Right. Uh, thank you April. Brian McAnallen from the Las Vegas Metro Chamber. I just want to echo what you just said about the composition issues and I know we're going to do some research for future meetings so we can talk about uh, whether or not there's uh, adequate representation on a lot of these boards, including NDOT and some others. So um, appreciate that. Okay, and Tyra Thompson. Um, so thank you so much for participating. Um, we will, on April 9th, our target is to start um, working on the bill drafts for business licensing. So, so we'll get you information. We, we may need to change the location, especially if we're going to include members of the Secretary of State's <coughs> office, because we need to do some video conferencing. So um, stay tuned, and, and if we don't have your information on our listing, give us your business card. So thank you so much, and we are going to reconvene. Thank you.